Hi there, welcome to Intro to Frady, as in Frady Matey. We are gonna take a look at how to graph rational functions using all of their different key features. Of course, we have to talk about what do you mean by key features? So the first F, for Frady stands for factor. So yes, factoring is not going anywhere. Sorry to be the bearer of the bad news. So you're gonna see when we factor it all out, we can find the R, A, and the T part. The standard form is basically the original equation. How did they originally give it to you? The A is gonna stand for roots. So the R for Frady is for roots. So you are gonna focus on the top part of your expression, your equation. These are your x-intercepts. So you can see I went ahead and created this quick example in red. So let's say this was our function and we were trying to find the x-intercepts for that, okay? So y is gonna be zero, x gets the number. So you can see I went ahead and multiplied both sides by three and I really just ended up solving this equal to zero. I just solved the numerator. So that's going to be our shortcut. The A of Frady, you're going to get really tired of me saying that, it stands for asymptotes. You are going to look at the bottom of the expression simply because these are where we had domain restrictions. This is where we're going to find these vertical asymptotes, these things we cannot cross. Remember, you shall not pass from our previous lesson. It all comes back around. So that's what the A is going to stand for. You're going to set the denominator to zero and never cross that boundary. The T we're briefly going to talk about, and it stands for twins, not as in congratulations, as in common pieces. So if you see identical terms or twins in the numerator, you're going to have something called a tangent point in the graph. If you happen to see twins in the denominator, you're going to have some togetherness. So the graph is going to come together. And here's a couple of examples if you'd like to kind of see what they look like. So x squared counts as twins because it's x times x. You can see x minus 5 squared. So there's two identical pieces, two identical pieces. And then everything in the bottom does not count. These are not identical pieces. Everything is different. E stands for end behavior, as in what does the graph do on the end pieces, on the very far left of the graph, the very far right? Where does the graph get close to? Really, this is your horizontal asymptote. And we have three possibilities here and a nice little rhyme to help you. High over low means go, slay an asymptote. Low over y, zero equals y for your horizontal. And the last one is if the degrees are the same, the coefficients, your name. So let's take a look at a, some quick examples here. So you can see on this first green one, the highest degree on top is a cubed. The highest on the bottom is a squared. So this one will have a slanted asymptote. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. So put that kind of in the back burner. Here we've got the highest on top is a squared. The highest on bottom is three. So that's a low over high, zero equals y. So y equals zero is the horizontal asymptote. And the last one, I can see the highest exponent on top is a two. The highest on bottom is also a two. Degrees are the same. So the coefficients you name. So three divided by three, y equals one is your horizontal asymptote. Very, very last thing is y, which is the y-intercept. So here you get to plug in zero for x and simplify, and you'll write yourself a nice ordered pair. So here I've listed all the parts of Frady. So factor is going to be first. All right, well, let me look at the numerator. Oh, it's just an x minus two piece. There's nothing to factor, okay? Denominator, x plus four. Oh, well, there's nothing to factor there either. So we don't have to factor. Gotta start somewhere, we'll start small. Roots, so again, that's where x gets the number, y is equal to zero. So my shortcut says I'm just gonna focus on the numerator. So x minus two is equal to zero. I can add two to both sides. So I'm gonna have a root located at two zeros. Vertical asymptote or restrictions, I can never divide by zero. So now the denominator goes to zero and you're gonna leave it as x is equal to negative four since this is a 
equation. Asymptotes are equations. So vertical asymptote right there at negative four. Tangency togetherness. Well, I only have one piece on top, one piece on bottom. There's no twins. I don't even have two pieces. So none. So these graphs are going to go in different directions. End behavior. Okay. So I'm going to look at the degrees on top and bottom. Well, the highest on the top is a one X to the first. Highest on bottom is also an X to the first. So degrees are the same. The coefficients you name. So this one will happen to be Y is equal to one for our nice little horizontal asymptote means I get to plug in zero for X back into the original equation and do a little bit of solving. So I've got negative two divided by positive four. So zero negative one half for a Y intercept. Well, I can already see I've got two points and I've got these boundaries. So here again, I can never cross a vertical asymptote. So my graph's going to come up. And then end behavior tells me the graph is going to get really, really close to y is equal to 1. I don't have tangency togetherness, so the graphs are not going to come together. So the other graph is going to have to go in this quadrant in opposite directions. And we kind of saw graphs like that already. Factoring, yes, I probably can factor here. I see an x squared minus 4. So I do have some difference of squares. I've got a plus 2 and a minus 2. And then on this blue piece, I have to multiply to somehow get to negative 6. And then I need to add to get to negative one. Why, yes, with negative three and two, all things are possible. A little bit of grouping will give me two X minus three and X plus one. All right, roots, I get to solve the numerator. It looks like I have two pieces, so two roots. One is at positive two, the other is at negative two. I have two vertical asymptotes. One is a little easier to graph at negative one. So X is equal to negative one. Boundary cannot go past, you shall not pass. And then I have another one here at one and a half. So here's one and a half, litty bitty live in space. Tangency and togetherness. Well, let me look at my factors. Well, those are different pieces. I don't see twins. These are all different pieces. So no, so my graph's gonna be going in a bunch of different directions end behavior. So I'm going to kind of go back to the original and take a look at the exponents. Well, the highest on top is a squared. Highest on bottom is also a squared. So degrees are the same. Coefficients, your name. So I'm going to have y is equal to a half. So ooh, very tight living quarters here on this graph y-intercept. So I get to plug in zero. And I like to use the original because I think it's easier to plug in. So I'm going to have a negative four over negative three. So zero four thirds is going to be so a little over one. So somewhere here. All right. Now I have to put all these pieces together because this is all I have. This is where the game begins. Well, I've got some boundaries. I have an end behavior, so the graph has to get close to here. I have a boundary here that I can't go past, and I have a route that I have to go through in gray. So it's gonna go through there and down this side. All right, here's the next piece. I have to go through this purple point. I can't go anywhere else. I also can see I have no roots here, so I can't cross the X axis. So all that means is I'm going to still use this boundary point, touch, and come right back up because I can't cross and I can't go through. I've got no roots to go through, so I can only bounce and go right back up. You'll also notice that this piece is pointing down this piece is pointing up. They are not going together. So that's where the tangency and togetherness can also help you. All right, the last one, here's the root. Here's the end behavior. So I have to go through there, come right through, touch the root, and get really close to that boundary point again. All right, same thing here. What about this? Okay, factor first. Let's see what we can do. 
took out an X as a GCF. I need to multiply to negative 18, add to negative three, negative six, positive three, roots, okay, everything on the top set equal to zero. Okay, I need to subtract two and here's my other root. So I've got zero, zero and negative two, zero. Vertical asymptotes are a little nicer here. I do have two. So I'm gonna have a vertical asymptote at positive six and I'm gonna have another one at negative three. So it looks like I'm gonna have three pieces of my graph, one in each one of these sections. Tangency togetherness. Well, if I look in the numerator, I've got two different pieces, so no twins there. The denominator, I see a minus six, I see a plus three, no twins there, so I have no tangency, no togetherness. So the graph is gonna go in different directions. End behavior, so I look back at the original. I can compare some exponents or some degrees. I see an x squared on top, an x squared on the bottom. So I've got one x squared and a one x squared. So one divided by one is one. So I've got a horizontal asymptote at one. Very interesting. And then a y-intercept. Hopefully you already can see it on the graph, but it's good to find it anyway, because I'm gonna have zero divided by negative 18. So a y-intercept is at zero, zero, which we already actually found. And that is all the key features that I have. So now I get to try to play the logic game of where these pieces are. Let's start with the middle section because I already have two points and I know that the graph has to go through there. But how do I know which way the graph is? How do I know what it even begins to look like? This is where I like to plug in an extra point, like two. Let's plug two back into the function. So everywhere I see an X, I'm gonna plug in a two and I'm gonna get this kind of weird fraction-y number. All I know is that it's negative. So two and this negative number. So this is another point on the graph, which gives me a much better picture because now I can see that it's gonna go through these points and I have boundary points. So here's going down going down. So there's where the vertical asymptotes can help you. So now I've got this middle piece. Well, I can see this one is pointing down. I have no togetherness. So if this one is going down, this piece is going to be going up and back down towards the end. So that's where the end behavior is gonna help you. It tells you where the ends are gonna get close to. Same thing on the other side. I've got this one is pointing down. There's no togetherness. So this piece can't go together with that piece. So this one's gonna point up and come right back down towards the end pieces for your final answer. Okay, on this very last one that we're going to try to graph, you can see I've kind of highlighted some numbers to help us. So I can see if I'm trying to factor the first part of Frady, I've got three times negative four. So I do have to multiply to negative 12 and add to positive one, which works out really nicely. So I should get three X plus four and X minus one. On the bottom, I can see they both have an X. So I can take out an X as a GCF roots. So you're going to focus on the numerator. So you've got two pieces that you'll have to solve for set both equal to zero. So I can go ahead and plot both of those on my graph. Asymptotes. So vertical looking in the denominator, where can I not cross? Where's the you shall not pass? So I've got two of them. One of them is a little easier to find right here at X is equal to zero. So there's one boundary. And then another one at five halves. So that's about two and a half. Interesting. So it kind of looks something like that. So three pieces of the graph looking for tangency or togetherness. Any twins in the top? No, nope. no twins in the bottom. So the graphs are going to go in separate and opposite directions. End behavior. So this is where we look at the coefficients. So I see the highest exponent on the top is a squared. The highest degree on the bottom is also a squared. Coefficients 
you name. So I've got three divided by two. So one and a half is going to be the horizontal asymptote. So I'm going to do one and a half. Looks something kind of like that. Interesting. And then a y-intercept. Hopefully, if you tried to plug in zero, you end up with negative four over zero. That's not possible. So we have no y-intercept. It does not exist. But we can even see that right here because we have an asymptote there. I can already see the first piece of the graph here because I have a root that I have to go through and I have some end behavior and a asymptote to help guide me. So your first piece is going to go through the root and right down here. This piece is going down. Well, I don't have any togetherness, so the other graph can't start by going down. That would be together, so I can't do that. So I'm going to have to start from up here, but I have to go through the root because I have to cross through there. Well, and then I don't bounce. So tangency means there's a bounce. That would mean that the graph would do something like this. But I don't have that. So the graph is going to keep going down. And then the last and final piece, this is going down. So this last piece is going to go up and get closer towards the edges. So again, here's the end behavior. It's all about what is the ends of the graph doing. The middle isn't really going to matter. But I know this one is really weird because we happen to cross the horizontal asymptote and that can happen. It's the vertical ones you never want to cross because those are domain restrictions. I can't divide by zero there. All right, this last one is just trying to create a function that has these pieces. Well, I've got roots right here at negative four and positive four. So roots, one at negative four and positive four. So I kind of like to go backwards and kind of undo everything that I did before. So I'm going to have an x plus four and an x minus four. And the roots, I find those in the top. I see a vertical asymptote at x is equal to 3 and at x is equal to 0. Vertical asymptotes I find in the denominator in the bottom. And then I see a horizontal at a number. So that means I need to have the same degree. So here I've got my y equals all nice and set up. I've got those two pieces, so roots in the top. The bottom, I need to have an x and an x minus 3. So it looks something kind of like that. All right, now how do I get this horizontal asymptote? Well, if I try to expand the top, I would have x squared minus 4. And then if I multiplied or expanded the bottom, I would have x squared minus 3x. And look at that. I do have the same degree. So I just need to be sure when I try to divide 3 over 1, that would work. I could have 6 over 2, any of these combinations. The key is this whole piece just be sure that that is getting multiplied by the 3 so that you still keep those roots in place, almost like this. If you put the 3 like that, that might help you see it a little bit better as well.